Welcome, my name is Ka'ama, and this is the Be Greater Moment. Today, I'm extremely, extremely excited to have my man on our show today. It's been a minute since I've seen him, um, but our roots go back quite a bit. We both grown men now. He's an international comedian, television host, uh, you know, social media personality, um, coming all the way from the DMV, D.C. area, uh, I have to introduce my man, Tyron Von Gersher. Did I say that right? I said that wrong. No, completely. Not only did you say that wrong, you said that wrong, but you said your name so correctly that I'm offended right now. <laughs> you, you had a lot of emphasis on your own name. You were like, Ka'ama. Like, you, know you had like, Ka'ama. I, I had to. Like, I got to every fine. time. I got to. It's, this is our running joke. My name is Tehran Von Gasri. Uh, Ka'ama, thank you for having me on the show. You forgot to uh, mention my OnlyFans. That's like my main source of money right now. Oh, shit. I, mean, I be showing feet. Yeah. I be selling panties. I'm I'm in there. Like, this is how we make money right now. Ah, uh, man. Uh, hey, hey. I mean, you know what I'm saying? With COVID and all that, I guess everybody does have an OnlyFans uh, page. I mean, I need 100%. to get on that. I need 100%. To, I, I haven't bought coffee from a Starbucks in a year and a half, which according to like 40 Forbes articles means I should be on my path to becoming a billionaire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but nothing has changed. So yeah, a lot of people in this world, but this is, uh, my name's Tehran. And yeah, Ka'ama and I go back to before all of this beginning. Oh, so before, before I was too big, before I was too big for the little people, we were both the little people. We were both the little people. I mean, but you were a little bit big and, and you know what I mean, our little people circle, man. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 you've always had an ability to uh, to shine, man. And that's, 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 a, that's a great thing. Like now it's the improv, well, before COVID, it's the improv, it's uh, Laugh Factory, it's the comedy club, it's... You know, people may know you with you because of your robe walking up and down Sunset Boulevard. You know what I mean? It looks like yeah. you've outgrown the robe. Uh, you know what I mean? I haven't outgrown. That's the funny part. I haven't outgrown the robe. I just don't wear the bathrobe when I'm actually inside the house. That, <laughs> that's the funniest yeah. part. People, I go to sleep in a tuxedo. People don't understand. <laughs> I only wear the bathrobe when I leave the house, which is a particular thing that happened. There's a yeah. particular reason that happened. Uh, which goes back to high school, actually. Talk, let's let's talk about it. Let's, let's, let's share that story. So for those who may not know, when I was going to high school, not only was I like, okay, we were going to high school. Sure, I was playing basketball. But what was popping was that I was a good student. I was actually such a good student. I eventually became valedictorian. But before we got to that point, it's time to take my, uh, my SATs. So we're taking the SATs. And if you remember, there's this one particular, we had sub schools. Yep. So sub schools is like four sub schools and then an overall principal. Yep. Every sub school yep. had a principal yep. on its own. Yep. And then there was a uh there was like an administrator. Yep. So the sub school principal was this for my for mine, and I think Kaama was in it too. We had a black sub school principal. You remember her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was yeah. Like an older black woman. Yep. She was um she was very cool with the black kids. Like Let's she see. was definitely always looking out. You and I were seeing her for two different reasons, though. <laughs> <laughs> so she was our sub school principal. But then there was an administrator who hated me. Now, in high school, if, if people think I'm extra now. I was extra in high school. Like, I was extra. My my locker had a sound system and a TV. I, w I thought I was Zach Morris, Will Smith. Every I was like all – I was Ferris Bueller. I was everybody in one. But – I was getting really good grades. I'm coming to take my SAT. On the SATs, they tell you, dress comfortably. That is one of the rules. Yeah. And as yeah. kind of a joke, but kind of because I didn't really know what to wear, I just wore my bathrobe to take the SATs. And as I go in, and I'm always late, the administrator, who's always, always mean, like, just does not like me. I'm already late. I only have a couple minutes before I get in there and the proctor closes the door. 
it's like you can't you're dressing appropriately you can't <laughs> you can't come in and i'm like in a bathrobe i have it's not like i'm in a bathrobe and naked right. i'm in a bathrobe but i have a t-shirt some sweats and some uh some slides on yeah and he's like you're dressing appropriately i was like hold on hold on hold on let me understand that girl over there in booty shorts and a and a halter top she's dressed appropriately <laughs> The, that dude over there who's in swim trunks and flip flops, he's dressed appropriately. If I take my bathrobe off, I am now also dressed appropriately. But because I have extra clothes on, I'm dressed inappropriately because you're <laughs> calling it a house coat and this isn't the house. It, I couldn't I couldn't even fathom it. Now, most people would probably just take it off. I was like, I need to talk to the principal. The administrator wouldn't get the principal, but a janitor who was there, who was also like that wise janitor who would always <laughs> clean up and it was just the nicest guy. He went and got the got the sub school principal who came over with the principal and they said, of course, let him take the take take the test. Yeah. Now I go in, I take the test, all is well. Come back when the results come out. I got a perfect SAT score. Now all of a sudden, Fairfax County loves me. Love I'm the toast of the town. <laughs> they were I'm the toast of the town. Yeah. Ex exactly. I'm the black <laughs> kid. At this, at this predominantly white school, yeah. who got a perfect SAT, yeah. Ebony Heritage Club. Here we come! Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like it's all they want to talk about is how great we are and diversity uh -huh. and all these things. And this is before it becomes a factor. And the supervisor wants to meet me and this and that. And I went a Macy Scholar on top of that. So now I started wearing a bathrobe all the time, except on game days because you know playing on the yeah. team is a privilege, not yep. a right. So we would dress up in suit, the suit, and tie. suit and tie. Yeah, exactly. But other than that, I'm out there in these bathrobes every, uh, most of the time now because it's not against school regulations. Nah. There's nothing that says you can't wear a bathrobe, nah. right? So I'm wearing my bathrobe. I'm in. I'm in school wearing this bathrobe, going through, and then I go and give this speech at this auditorium uh, here, and they hold for me for this Macy scholar and I'm in a bathrobe and I give my version the, of the, I have a dream speech as I speak on directly to the, I'm staring at the administrator. I'm staring <laughs> at his face into his soul. I'm staring into his soul. And I'm like, it, for small minded people who can't think out of the box, those who do think out of the box will be the saviors of this planet. Like I'm giving this speech <laughs> with my heart. Uh, and that that's why I started wearing the bathrobe, and I just I've been wearing it ever since. It's just been a part of you ever since. It was a part of you then. So exactly. I mean, so like you 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 kind of touched on going to like for those that don't know, Fairfax County is basically the suburbs of Washington D.C. It's yeah. where all of your heads of state children live and go to high school and. Uh, great place, kind of, to grow up. But if you're like me and Tehran, you know, we have a little bit more melanin in our skin. And you're even more, a little bit more diverse, if I could say that. Your father is from Iran. 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 Yeah. My and father's your, Iranian. And then your mother is African-American. Blackity you, black black. Blackity yes. black from the D.C. area. Can you... Yeah, from D.C. Can you talk about your personal experience having that diversity in your own home right what was what was that like you know what i mean because it's already odd for us being in fairfax because i know i had my my hell being in fairfax coming from baltimore coming from philly with my own background what was it like for you having that that the i mean polar opposites really under one well, roof I don't know when the last time you went back to Fairfax is, but when, when Kaama and I were in Fairfax, Fairfax was diverse, comparatively speaking, yeah. but still in this country, diversity does not mean diversity. <laughs> so even when you go to somewhere like Los Angeles, where we're, uh, we are now, yeah. when you're in Los Angeles, uh, which was something you would never even have thought of when you're from D.C. So right. many people don't even move from within 20 miles 20. or 50 miles of their, their birth radius. So They're still all there. Exactly. Even in Los Angeles, a major metropolitan area, uh, a city that has more population than 60 percent of the rest of the United States. Even here, segregation is a big part of the city. When yep. I say Inglewood or Compton, you know who I'm talking about. Yep. When I say Beverly Hills, you know I speak, I'm speaking about the Persians. If I say East L.A., you know I'm speaking about Latinx. If I say Glendale, you know I'm speaking about Armenians. Yep. So it's extremely segregated 
That's how almost every school lunch table across the country is. But especially when you're somebody like Ka'ama and I, and that's how we even connected is because you come from a background. I'm from Southeast DC, which is the hood hood, not the rap hood. It's the hood hood. It's the hood hood. Exactly. Ray for Edmund. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's yeah. like, that's like my mother's first cousin. So that's a real thing. Yeah, so no, I, come I know. From that background. Yeah. I come from that background and I'm now in, I'm in the suburb and thankfully because of my mixed cultural heritage, I was, I was quick to adapt, but I don't specifically code switch. And you see that a lot in times with, with people being out of their place is they tend to code switch. And I, it's not just relegated towards black kids in, in white areas. White kids in black areas tend to code switch. It yep. goes all the way around. Eminem. Ka'ama and I, exactly. Ka'ama and I never code switch, which also got us into a lot of problems. But not because we were being tough. We were simply being ourselves, yep. a product of our nurture and nature. Yep. So with me, the diversity in my family, it made it easier for me to adapt in every single situation because I realized that people in general are much more alike than they are different. And we mm. may not see that because most people are just stuck in their field. So with Ka'ama being a more and being cultured and understanding that worldly culture and being able to research, for example, his position and his ancestry and his denotation in life, that gives him an extra layer mm. that doesn't exist for mo mo most people. People don't realize how influential having an ancestry or knowing your ancestry is. And I'm not saying ancestry.com has anything for people of color. What I'm saying is your own research. Does. Absolutely. Find out who your parents are. Find out who your grandparents are. Find out who your great grandparents are, because even in a moment of weakness, even in a moment of weakness, that can give you strength. So even if you watch these magic movies, right? Movies about magic, they're always like drawing on the power of my great, great grandfather. Right. It, Cause that's, that's part of that power. Yeah. And we have that internally every day. Right. So I, I can draw my power from two great groups of people, the Persians and African-Americans. And I give that and allow that to be my strength each and every day. That's what's up, man. I couldn't have said it better myself, you know what I mean? So <laughs> you graduate high school. There's some turbulence in between high school and that next move. Can you talk about some of the the turbulence that you had, some of the conflict that you ran into? And then Oh, of course. And how you transitioned from that and made your next move to Georgetown. You know yeah. what I mean? Like let's I, build I, upon it. See, uh, I, for, I keep forgetting Ka'ama knows the real story. That's the problem. <laughs> but, but see, I'm not going I'm not, I'm not to talk. We, look, look. Yeah. I want you to talk about some of the turbulence, right? And just, you know, because it's, it's all about those moments that we tap into our greatness. That's the be greater moment. When that light bulb went off, you know what I mean? You've always been, like I said in the introduction, you've always shined in every room that you've walked into. You know what I mean? That's how we connect it. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you know, like minds, they always connect. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I want yeah, you to talk, talk about some of the, the turbulence. You know what I mean? Just, you know, you landed, you just had some turbulence. I landed. I landed. So real, <laughs> recognize real. So there was this time in between graduating high school and going to Georgetown Law, going to law school. So, and the reason this comes up is because while I was doing great academically, on the street side, I was doing a lot of things in the street world, just filling in and giving in to my mischievous nature, right? Mm -hmm. so that's the that's the that's the problem when you sometimes when you're too clever, you start doing clever things and clever things can get you in trouble. Mm -hmm. And there was a situation in Fairfax County where everybody are in the I remember the news article even read when good kids gone bad. Yeah. So there was a situation in Fairfax County specifically in which major uh, people who were my friends in a group of circle of my friends were involved in major drug dealing and there was a murder and all of this house of cards came crumbling down at one time. Mm -hmm. So there's a kid named Justin Wolf who was the youngest person ever given the death penalty in the state of Virginia, which is saying a lot. Yep. Then on top of that, there was the murder 
and there was a kid named Owen Barber, and there's a whole thing, and these are things you could probably take your time to look up. And of course, because we were all from the same area and a group of friends, we were all somehow implicated in this process, even though not all of us were guilty. And that's the thing about the system. It's, it tries to get and put down as many people, especially when it finds some people of color in the midst of some white people. It'll yep. go for the people of color as well. Thankfully, I was able to um, not be implicated in this situation and get out. And a lot of people were not that lucky. A lot of people got convicted on on some BS yeah. and things of that nature. Yep. And at this time, I was throwing parties and I was becoming a nightlife guru in the DC area. And all that is to say there were situations and things coming up. There was a lot of turbulence in all this. Yep. And as I was working in, in parties and things were collapsing in this nature, I turned on the television and I was watching Fuse Network. For those of you who don't know what Fuse Network is, Fuse Network is Canadian Canadian MTV. Yep. And I don't even know why I had this channel at this time. <laughs> I, I don't even know why I had this channel. I was just making so much money. I just had things I didn't need. Right. right. So here I am watching Fuse Network and I see I see um, this this light skinned black guy, a comedian, light skinned fro, great smile, funny, yeah. by the name of Mike E. Winfield, a friend of mine now. But at the time, this was a distant, right, distant guy on TV. Like this was no six degrees of separation. Right. This was impossible. I was like, where is that guy? Right. And I and I see him telling jokes and introducing music videos. And in my head, I literally thought, man, if this dude can do this shit, I can do it too. Right. That's literally what I thought. So I flew to LA where he was at the Laugh Factory that weekend. And I tried to meet him. I ended up meeting the owner of the Laugh Factory, Jamie Masada, who gave me my first big break, which is a show at the Laugh Factory. I, after I convinced him that I do comedy and I would love to do a show, I sold out the show on a Monday. And even though he never came to see if I was good or not, he realized <laughs> that you know selling out the show is a, is a great gonna, talent yeah. skill. Good enough. Yeah, hell yeah. And I started a show every Monday, except the problem was, I'm finishing law school and I don't live in LA, but I never told him that at the time. <laughs> I used to fly every Monday, Virgin America, $99 each way. I used to fly from DC to LA, take two buses, get to the Laugh Factory, and then have to be on the bus by 12.45, I mean, by, be on the bus by 12.03 to be back at the airport by 1.45 so I could take the red eye back, back to, to DC. DC so I wouldn't miss my class the next day. Man. And that was my life for nine and nine months in a week until it was done. And that that's how I got my start. And this is why I talk about representation. This is why I think Ka'ama and what he does is so important. When people see, I wasn't a kid. I wasn't five, I wasn't seven, I wasn't 10, I wasn't 12, I wasn't 14, 15, 18. I was at this point 22 years old, a grown man. Yep. 10, like, And I'm, I'm looking at it like, wow, this, Seeing somebody who looked like me on television, yeah. seeing someone who looked like me and was doing something that made me think I could do it too, changed my life. That's how important representation is. That's how important this podcast is because there's a, a little black kid who's watching this and going, wow, this guy's doing this? Yeah. <laughs> I can do it. Yeah. And then yeah. they will. And even if they do it better, that's even better. That's even better. That's the thing. I mean... Power is the ability to promote someone else to power, either directly or indirectly. And that, that uh, what's his name again? Michael? Mike E. Winfield. Mike E. Winfield empowered you to seek him out to figure out how you could get in the comedy game and how you could do what he was doing. For that's sure. I mean, that that's that be greater moment. You know Just what I mean? Just by his existence, which is crazy. And it's like, I don't care what you think of President Obama politically, right. I don't care. Right. That, that's neither here nor there. Yep. But his existence is the reason why we have so many black politicians today. His existence, when you start just seeing someone doing something that you think you can too. Yep. I re even something like a show, A Different World. I don't know how many people remember the A Different World. I'm sure a lot of people of color might remember that show. Yeah. That show was on in the 90s. It was Denise went yeah. to Denise. Huxtable from the Cosby Show goes to college and Hillman to College. A, exactly. A historically black college. And then in the 90s, there becomes an exponential boom yep. in the attendance of HBCUs. Yep. And and black 
the black community sees the largest rise of college attending students that it has in the history since the 1920s and yep. Harlem Renaissance Ren and going to the 30s and the Harlem Renaissance. Yep. That's how important that's how important representation is. You see something, you do something, and that's what it's about. It is. It is a hundred percent. You know, it it we don't put enough emphasis in our community on positive representation. When you look at the Obamas, the husband, the wife, the beautiful daughters, the daughters go to Ivy League schools now and they're doing their thing. But because of that, because the nation had that representation and not only a beautiful family, but extremely well-spoken, extremely polished, but also could get on the basketball court and shoot you know, the jumper or what have you, that trickled down into corporate America. Now you have companies like Target, uh, Walmart, uh, Macy's that have inclusion within their budget to help black entrepreneurs or black companies that have benefited. You know, and I'm going to name drop my boy Kareem Cook, who's been a guest on the show, and his company, Nature Aid, which is now in Target, in Costco, uh, and it's all over Amazon. But that benefits us tremendously. And it helps, you know, guys like yourself, man. You know, I, I've seen, like, people, listen, listen. you listening to this show. Me and this guy, I'm 42. I'll be 43 in March. I'm 40, I'll be 43 years old. I've known him when he was throwing parties at Bohemian Caverns in, in D.C. when he was in high school, when we were in high school. And our circles overlapped. You know what I mean? I was that oddball not oddball kid, but I was that, I didn't fit in Fairfax. I'm from Baltimore, you know what I mean? I'm from Philly. I come to the DC area and it's like, I'm not necessarily into the go-go, but I love it. I'm not in the white crew, but they love me. I'm not in the black crew, but they love me. And I just fused in and out of circles where we cross paths, connected, and stayed friends all the way to today. All of that to me is still representation. I represented who I am in those different circles. You represented your Persian background, your Moorish or black African-American background in all these different circles. Being a, a great student, you took that and you bring that into your comedy. You bring all of those worlds and they all collide into your comedic acts today. Um, and for me, it's like, Yo, you the Bill Maher of this shit, man. You know what I mean? Because you talk about the politics. You, you're you not scared to talk about the things that other people don't want to talk about. You and, you know, you're not at, you, you, you and Dave Chappelle. You know what I mean? Um, expand upon how all of that has, has helped you in your comedic world. Yeah, I, first of all, I want to let everyone understand when I get into when I get to high school, Kaama had already blazed this trail, right? Of this, like he had already been a legend in the school because he was able to navigate his way around different groups of people and was on his doing his own thing. And that that's something that I'm not just saying that because you're here. That's something we touched the power even when we randomly listen. We randomly ran into into each other in Los Angeles. Playing basketball, basketball. Kaama comes up to me on a court, and I think he's about to be like, "Who's next?" And he's like, "Yo!" And I was like, "Wait, <laughs> what?" No. And then it was like we just real. It was like a moment, like, "Whoa! How are we both here right now?" At the same how are time, we both three thousand five hundred miles away from each other's origins here right now. Yeah. So, when it comes to comedy, first of all, you put me in amazing company when you even say the words Dave Chappelle, my name shouldn't even be mentioned, even though Chappelle said I was the next Chappelle, but you know, whatever. Hey, like, come the on now. Is, Dave Chappelle is, the, in my opinion, the greatest comedian ever. Now, there are many greats. There are the Priors. There are, there are Eddie Murphy. But for me, it's Dave Chappelle, and it's because he's able to, he's able to speak on subjects that are not only varied, but they're very pertinent to our actual lives. So I'm not a fan of silly comedy. That's just me personally. You're allowed to be a fan of whatever you like. Greatness, greatness uh, is not subjective. However, taste is. Yep. So you can you can tell me you can tell me things like 
I don't like Drake. I understand if you don't like Drake. Yeah. That may, I don't like Travis Scott. I understand. You don't have to like Travis Scott, but you should undoubtedly know that they're great. Yeah. I don't like Tom Brady. I get it. I don't like LeBron James. I get it. Yeah. But you should know that they're still great. Yeah. It's when people say things like Drake sucks, Michael Jordan sucks, Kobe <laughs> sucks. Blasphemous. Like, uh, we can't be friends because you don't understand greatness. Yeah. You don't understand greatness. Yeah. And, and so that's the thing. You can say I don't like the way LeBron plays. I understand. But don't say he's not great. And Dave Chappelle is a great. Whether you like his comedy or not, he is a great. Mm. And what he's able to do with comedy and pushing the boundaries and breaking down social commentary in such a degree that the realest things we laugh at and he takes tragedy which is a close lens and zooms it out to a long lens of comedy yeah is amazing yeah and so with my comedy i try to do or at least i do the same things i don't know if i specifically try just because it is my nature mm -hmm. even with politics i don't talk about politics i talk about principles and if you are offended by that then you don't have principles when it comes to racism, racism is not politics. Racism is a principle. Mm. It shouldn't matter if you're Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, fascist or not. Racism is a principle, yep. period. And I speak about, upon that because it is my experience. Yep. It's my experience the way it is your experience. Yep. And, and telling my stories on stage, telling my stories and my perspective and my point of view Honestly, it brings people together. And hopefully, even those who don't agree have a better understanding or some comprehension of what it's like through laughter. Because that's what comedy is. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Mm. Comedy is simply the best medicine for a tragic world. And good comedy makes you laugh, but great comedy makes you think. And that's the best response. It's not just ha, ha, ha. It's ha, ha. That's so true. Yep. And that's what I look for in my comedy. Dope. That's amazing, man. Bridging the gap on talking about comedy and where you are now, how has the current environment fueled your comedic act, but also affected it? Meaning you can't go to the Laugh Factory. You can't go to yeah. improv. You can't. So how have you adjusted? Because you've, <laughs> you've been amazing at pivoting, right? How has the current environment affected your comedy and how has it fueled your comedy? Well, everything that's going on now, everybody's life came to a halt. But the difference is if you were able to pivot, like Kaama said, were you able to pivot and and not travel and pivot and take it to the to the to the rim anyways? And hope thankfully I've been able to pivot to some degree. Some comedians have been much better at it. Unfortunately, many comedians have been much worse at it. Mm. We are now doing a lot of things online, being as productive as possible, creating social media presence, creating stories that can be told in 15 seconds or less, or one mm. minute or less, or three minutes or less. And we're trying to get that out there. It's different forms of stand-up. We are doing Zoom shows. We're doing social distance shows. We're doing online shows. We're doing Instagram Live. We've had to take out the middleman which is the comedy club and do it upon do it ourselves now in most things the middleman is the problem in comedy the middleman was our savior because we need that audience we feed off the audience mm -hmm. that is how it works dave Chappelle says something so eloquent when he says that the same way a singer takes to the stage and has their band as their musical accompaniment mm -hmm. a comedian our audience is our band mm. and the music we make is laughter. That's the music we make. Yeah. And we need to hear that laughter, which you don't get on IG live, which you don't get on many zoom shows, which you don't get when it's social media, you just get likes, you don't get that feedback, yeah. but it's what we have to do right now because we're all in this together. In fact, if the pandemic showed us anything is that nature doesn't care what, color, religion, spiritual affiliations, at all. General sexuality, it does not care. At all. We are all in this together. For sure. 100%, man. Nature is that lion. You know what I mean? It's going to feed on what it can feed on. So, yeah, man. That that's that's great. Um I am kicking myself because I haven't gotten an opportunity to see you 
live, but at the same time, I know you. You've like. seen me live. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You've seen me live in life. <laughs> you've seen me live in life. You've gotten VIP tickets hey. to my 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 buffoonery, my friend. Hey, you've man. seen me Let's... act up in any situation. Hey man, and that that's to me. Uh, I'm honored in that. I'm honored that I'm able to walk up to you on that basketball court. I remember, uh, man, I, I, I know who we were with. I'm going I'm to leave them nameless for the moment. But I said, so I said, man, that's my man. It was like, who? It's like, that's my man with, with the hat on, right? There's name on his hat. That's my man. You know, to be able to approach you and say, and whisper in your ear. I didn't say, nah, I just whispered one little thing in your ear. You look like, oh, shit. That lets me know that our friendship, our bond, leads us to where you are right now on my show. Thank you for being on my show. I appreciate that. With that, can you tell me where the people can find you on social media? What's your next live uh, Instagram live show? Your next Zoom? What What do you got lined up? Give it to us so the people can can you know get their dose of uh, laughter. Yeah, it was it was interesting because when Kaama, okay, so Kaama had come. I just want because that basketball story was like one of the most random occurrences. <laughs> We're playing basketball. By the way, basketball courts in L.A. break my heart because they're so nice and sometimes can be so empty. Oh but God! But we have found yeah. West Hollywood Park is a nice park where everybody used to play before they took the rims down <laughs> during the pandemic, right? So. We're, I'm playing basketball, and not only am I extra on the basketball court, there are people there that, you know, know who I am, and yeah. they, they're, they're watching the come up. And Kam was like, yo, that's my dude. And people were like, nah, you don't know him. And he came up, and I was like, that's my dude. <laughs> and, and everybody was like, how do you guys know each other? And we're yeah. like, yo, you can't hear all that. Yeah, you're yeah, not, yeah, yeah. You're not... that's, a, that's a fourth date conversation. You understand? Yeah. That's like... Yeah, you don't get that first date. Like, you know when girls on a first date want to know all your secrets? Yep. And you're like, mm -mm. you don't, hey, hey, babe, you don't get my first secret. It's dinner, movie, anal, and then Then, then you get that. You're right. Yeah, you, don't get, you don't get to know. It's not even regular sex. You got to do anal yep. before you get to know the real secrets. Because 100%. I'm not I'm not just giving you this information. That, that's, that's, yeah. Show. So Kaama has real information about my life. Like if I do it, if I if I get an E Hollywood story, I'm gonna have to have Kaama taken out. Like he can't yeah. hey. he, he can't be, <laughs> be like, yo, um, do y'all know about uh, 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 yep, yep. Uh, 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 quiet. Uh those court cases might still be pending. <laughs> so in 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 conclusion, I this is the number one thing you have to understand. Anybody who's in the art. This is the number one thing you can do. Sure, I love your money. We love your money. But more importantly, we love your support. And mm. by support, there's so many things you can do that take zero dollars. Mm. Spread the word. Tell your friends. Share our stories. Share our clips. Tell others to follow us because our follows mean something. So a lot of people who aren't in the art, when you want to follow, you just want to follow. There's right. nothing. You gain nothing. You lose nothing. Yeah. That follow means nothing for you. But for me, it's the difference between being an A-lister and being homeless. So that follow is everything. So make sure to follow me on social media at I am Tehran all across the board. That's I A M T E H R A N. And my name is Tehran, like the capital of Iran. So if you don't know how to spell it, just watch Fox News. Eventually, <laughs> it's gonna be on the news. And they got a show on. They got a show on Amazon, I think. Uh, Apple Plus. Apple, Apple Plus. Plus. There it is. Yep. There it is. Yep. So just make sure to follow me and tell your friends and spread the word, spread the love. Just don't spread Corona. I heard that, man. I heard that. Social distance. Wash your nasty hands. You know what I mean, and and let's let's curb this shit so we can. And, hey, in LA, if anybody listening to this show right now or watching it from LA, stop going to Miami, stop going to Atlanta, stop going to Mexico, and then bringing that shit back to LA and infecting LA. Like I want to go to a restaurant at some point. I miss playing basketball indoors. I'm seeing on the IG and Facebook everybody indoors eating, partying like nothing's going on, and then bringing that shit back to LA. And Newsom is not having it. He is keeping us locked down. No, he's not having it. <laughs> he's not I having mean, it. they just lifted. They actually just lifted it today. So oh. we don't know what that actually means, though. Yeah, we don't know what that means. We don't know what uh, that means. But I'm sure. Oh, also, I have a huge 
uh, show on February 4th online at the Laugh Factory. So it'll be online, but you can, but because the way we have it set up there, we can talk directly to you. It's it, it's the closest you can feel to being at the show. Oh, it's that's the amazing. Feel you can get to being at the show. So please check that out. Go to laughfactory.com for tickets or find it on Eventbrite or come to my page and I'll be able to direct you that way. But I'm sure I'll be, we'll see how that lifting of the restraint, what that means for us. February 4th, laughfactory.com. Live right. show, up close and personal. You heard it, folks. Get your tickets. You can go to his page. You can go to uh, Laugh Factory's page. Um, you can go to eventsbrights.com and, you know, y'all can send me a check for that one. Um, <laughs> uh, it's been a pleasure. I hope to do this again. I hope to see you in person soon, sooner than later. 2024, baby. Hey, hey, hey. We don't know, bro. We don't know. We don't know. (laughs) Hey, I'm negative. You know what I mean? So I'm good. (laughs) Hey, man, I love you, bro. I appreciate you for being on the show, man. I appreciate you. Until next time, this has been the Be Greater Moment. Thank you, ladies and gents. Talk, 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 talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. You can be greater. Yeah, have you been?